going on YouTube this is Necro Steve and today we have a live narrated Wi-Fi battle video I have no idea how long this is going to take I have no idea if I'm even going to be able to find a battle video but it's something different I hope you'll enjoy it if you do enjoy this battle video make sure you hit that like button that really helps a lot uh, I should really put up a video explaining why that helps but just take my word for it it helps now today I ha am using one of the teams that is going to be one of my team combination of 12 for the Striaton Battle Club, and so we'll take a look at all six of those members before we get started. We have a Choice Banded Iron Fist Infernape. Of course, Iron Fist raises the power of punching moves by 20%. Um, he's a really good secondary lead if I find out that Shuckle is not a good lead Pokemon, uh, just because they have like a Magic Bounce or something like that. A lot of the Magic Bounce Pokemon are weak to U-Turn, and then of course, uh, Close Combat and Mock Punch are just really really good fighting stab mock punch with ban and iron fist allows me to punch through a lot of things and priority is just good to have on any team anyway secondarily we have Gudra the assault vest one that's relaxed and I used it in the ICL on my doubles team still running the same moves on it I decided to just leave the moves as they are because of the coverage uh, Gudra tends to be able to take a dragon type move from dragons and hit them back with an ice beam and it can also switch in on Rotom, which is pretty important because I don't really have another check for Rotom on this team. So, very useful with their Gudra there. Shuckle is my defensive Pokemon running max HP, max defense. I decided to, uh, not only is this my a new set to use Sticky Web, but also it has Knock Off, which is a fun egg move for Shuckle, just because most things can't take it out in one hit. So if you're leaving something in on Shuckle, it's probably going to lose its HP. And if I use Power Split, I can get several Knock Offs going. Um, just because they probably won't have enough HP, or enough attack, excuse me, to KO things after a power split. Fourth Pokemon on the team is a Life Orb Starmie. Uh, this is not only meant to be a special attacker, really hit and run, um, but also just to provide that nice water coverage for the team. Uh, and to be my spinner, because we have Shuckle and Mammal Swine and Pinsir on this team, I really needed a, a, a reliable spinner, and Starmie being very fast, uh, can definitely fill that role. I decided to use Life Orb with it just because I need a little bit more stopping power on those special moves because I don't have that many special moves on this combination. And I've decided to use Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, and Surf. I'm going to try that out with this battle. We'll see if I need to switch Ice Beam to Psychic or Psyshock. Uh, in testing, I didn't really end up using Psychic that much, whereas Thunderbolt and Ice Beam is just good coverage. So, we'll see. Then my Stealth Rocker is Mamoswine, uh, also packing priority with Ice Shard. Ground and Ice is very good to have. I just realized how many Ice attacks I have on this team. Maybe it would be prudent to switch Ice Beam on Starmie to Psychic, but we'll see in the next um, battle if that's a good idea or not. Of course, this is also my Stealth Rocker. I decided to run Lumberry on it, just because it's so prone to getting burned. Very annoying. It's also a nice little Aegislash check, uh, and it and it also can be a kind of a secondary check to Talonflame because um, it won't die to a single Brave Bird and then I can hit it back with an Icicle Crash. So, you know, fun times there. Then finally, I'm going to try out Mega Pinsir. Uh, of course, Pinsir's ability changes to Aerialate, which means all normal type attacks turn into flying type attacks and get boosted by, I think, 20%. And so Return and Quick Attack will both turn into flying type attacks and have their power boosted. And then, as we all know from Landorus, ground flying is fantastic coverage. Glyscore also says hello. And so, uh, yeah, we'll just see how this works. And these are six of the Pokemon that I'm considering using for my 12 for the uh, Striaton Battle Club. So, I, I have a few other Pokemon that I have in mind to use, but I really just wanted to give Mega Pinsir a shot, because I haven't really used one before. Um, big shout-outs to uh, Guy from Twitter. If you look at the uh, original trainer on some of these Pokemon, he actually bred them for me. I think he bred the Gudra and the Infernape for me. So, 
Big shout outs to him. So hopefully we're going to be able to find a match. Let's give it the old college try here. Do I have items on everyone? I better. Okay, good. Let's just pop on out of here. I hope you guys are all having a pretty good day there. I actually just got off of work and I'm between jobs at the moment. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. I should have a stylus around here somewhere because I, I just realized I'll be reaching in front of the camera to do things. Not good radio there to reach in front of the camera. Wait, no. Radio people don't care if you reach in front of the camera. That's that's the news. Not good news. Uh, let's see. There we go. Oh. Uh, someone far away. Let's just look for a battle. Do you want a battle? Chibi, I believe, is someone on Twitter? Yes, yes. And if he doesn't want a battle, we can go find a passerby. But yeah, I haven't done a live one before, so this should be interesting. And if it takes too long, I can just edit this out. That is the power of editing. I actually had a uh, pretty annoying lunch just because um, it ended up... I. I was cut at a certain time, which means, you know, for those of you guys who don't work in restaurants, being cut means, you know what, you can start working on your closing work so you can get out of the restaurant and get off the clock. And there was an issue with one of the other regional managers being there. So our manager didn't want anyone to leave at that time because he was like, okay, if we need people, I want people here. So I just ended up hanging around about an hour and a half, making 2.13 an hour, not taking any more tables because I was cut. So that was a little annoying. But, uh... Outside of that, not a bad, um, shift, I guess. I didn't have any issues with any food or anything. If you all are ever eating out and about, tip your servers. That's all I can say about that. Just, most places, um, servers are only going to make two thirteen an hour. And that's just so whatever corporation or franchise it is can cover their taxes. Um, and then on the back end, they can say, oh, if they didn't make a lot of tips, we'll use that two thirteen an hour to make sure they get up to minimum wage. But, uh, if a person is serving you, just really consider tipping at least 20% on there. Oh man, we weren't able to find a battle there. That's fine, we'll look for a passerby. Um, 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 let's see. I'm probably gonna have to edit this. Gosh darn it. Gosh golly darn it. That is not helpful. Yes, that's what I say when I'm happy. I say nothing when I'm happy. Um, Alright, let's see if we can find anyone with that. But yeah, I don't remember what I was talking about. Tip your servers. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's all I'm talking about, I guess. <sighs> and I am enjoying my work at the scene... Uh, which is a new place I'm working at. That's more upscale dining. And it is very fast-paced. It's completely different from uh, Applebee's where I work. Because Applebee's, of course, is fine dining. The scene is upscale dining. It's the only, I think that's the only scene that there is, the one that's here at the Birch Street in Monaco. And I, I'm, I am enjoying it there. It's a different style of restaurant for sure than Applebee's. So if nothing else, I can flex a little bit of different muscles there. It is nice that when I got hired at the scene, I feel like they appreciated my background there, whereas getting hired at Applebee's basically required me to take my degrees off of my resume. So, yeah. And I had I didn't just apply at Applebee's, of course. I had applied at a bunch of other places. Still had no luck. So, it it is nice that they looked at my degrees and went, wow, this would be... We want someone who has this background serving here so it's nice to have that appreciation there and as far as my job search goes man I have so many irons in the fire I keep getting back rejections from every place where I don't hear anything even when I follow up I applied on a couple of jobs for the city that I live in um, being administrative court magistrate I uh, also really mother freaker no one wants to battle let's just stop this shit Pause and pause. Alrighty, I finally found the battle. Thank you very much, Chewy. I think that's Mike Hobbs on Twitter, I believe. Uh, 
I always am bad at remembering people's in-game names as opposed to their actual names or their names that they go by online. But yeah, we're just going to use regular battle music because that's what I'm feeling like today. And I already went through the team, so let's just hop right in there. Select the Pokemon you want to enter. Let's take a look at his team, of course. He has a Gliscor, a Venusaur. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he has a Venusaur. Uh, a Greninja, a uh, Blastoise, a Swampert, and a Dust Noir. Wow, it's too bad that I didn't bring a uh, Grass type to this battle, because it would have been really nice against those three Water types, but I already know that Mike really likes his Water types. So let's see Blastoise, Swampert, Dust Noir, Venusaur, and Greninja. Now let's see here. He has. Okay, it is possible for Gliscor to have Defog. Um, it's going to be really important to keep um, Pinsir alive during this match because that might be my only way to handle Mega Venusaur. Uh, it's going to be okay to lead out with Shuckle here, although it's very likely he's going to lead with Greninja, maybe Swampert. Either way, I think Inferno is going to be my best lead because if he leads out with Greninja, I can just mock Punch the crap out of it. If he leads out with Swampert, I can just U-turn away from it. Um... If he does have Swamper as a lead, or he can also set up Stealth Rocks with Gliscor. Dust and Wire is very bulky, but I should be able to handle it relatively well just by hopefully setting up at some point with Pinsir. Uh, yeah, so I think Inferno is going to be my best lead here, being able to hit everything neutrally except for Gliscor with U turn. Uh, and of course, Dust and Wire re resists the U turn. So we'll see how it goes. Alright, good luck. Here we go. Live battles, woo, 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 and stuff and stuff. Oh, wait, the music's probably a little loud. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to use the audio from the... Uh, oh, wait, no, yeah, you might be able to hear it in the microphone from the... I'm going to turn it down. Yeah, I'll have my own music later. I can do my own music. I'm a big boy. Uh, but, yeah, I hope you guys are liking my, my thought process here. So he's going to lead out with his Greninja, which is A-OK -okay by me. He might just switch right out to, um, well, let's see. If he led with it, it is very likely that it's Sash, so if I went for U-Turn and he's Sash, he would be able to knock me right out with a Hydro Pump. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, since he did lead with it, I'm going to assume he is Sash, which means U-Turn is not going to be my optimal play because he will outspeed me. Uh, but since he's going for a Water move, Gudra is going to be my best switch in. Even if he has Ice Beam, it will not do that much damage to Gudra, so let's just switch right out to Gudra. And it's always important to in, to note how long it takes your opponent to make their move. Right there, I took a little longer than him to make a move. He just went straight for Surf, so he is very likely sashed. Uh, here, I can't imagine he's going to stay in against Gudra. Um, if he does stay in, he'll have the Ice Beam if he switches out. I have coverage moves for everything on his team except for Dustin Wire, who will still take chip damage from something. Uh, he is a water type right now. I could see him switching in Venusaur, although I'm not sure what Venusaur will do. Well, Venusaur can Mega Evolve in my face and then stall me out, actually. Uh, Gliscor will be a bad switch for him. I don't have Thunderbolt on my Gudra, so I think the best move here is going to be to go for a neutral Dragon Pulse. That's going to hit, I, that's going to break his Sash for sure, and then if he start, tries to switch in anything, it's going to take at least some damage. I could go for Power Whip just because of the sheer number of grass types, I mean, water types that he has on his team. Power Whip will, will hit everything except for Venusaur. But I feel like Venusaur is going to come in here, but well, we'll see. We're just going to go for Dragon Pulse for now. Okay, he is switching out Greninja. And he, oh, he went out to me. So yep, he definitely went out in Venusaur. That is okay. I'm not, Venusaur can be very frustrating to battle unless you have something for it. Um, and in this case, Mega Pinsir definitely can handle Venusaur, but it can't switch directly into it. So you definitely have to give yourself a situation where you can bring it in at some point. Now, uh, I don't really want to switch out of here, because he can't Sleep Powder my Gudra. He also can't use Leech Seed. He can Poison me, which could be a little bit annoying. Um, of course, Ice Beam will do... If he, when he Mega Evolves, because he's going to Mega Evolve, he'll get the ability Thick Fat. So, uh, we don't really want to use Ice Beam or Flamethrower. So, let's just keep on Dragon Pulsing, because he doesn't have, and this is why it's good to carry a Fairy type on your team. Because, uh, you know, if your opponent's going to spam Dragon type moves, you can just switch a Fairy in there. Last generation it was make sure you have a Steel type, but why resistant when you can be immune, as far as I'm concerned. 
So we're going to see what he goes for. Hopefully he goes for a grass type move because that means he'll waste a turn. He does try to go for Leech Seed. Now he sees that I have Sap Sipper. So now it's very likely he'll either use Synthesis or he'll go for a Poison type move or whatever coverage he move he has. I really need to PP up all these moves because none of them have their max um, amount of PP that they can use. I can hear people giggling in the distance as I say the word PP over and over again. And to you I say, that's not funny. Okay, he is going to switch out. He's bringing in Gliscor, which is awesome because I've only been using Dragon Pulse this whole time. And Gudra has such a massive move pool, it's really hard to predict what moves it has. He is, it's very likely that he's going to protect right here just to get some extra HP back. He could also Toxic me or set up Stealth Rocks. He could also knock off, which would be really annoying. Um, I'm just going to go for Ice Beam to scare him out, and if he tries to knock off or something, uh, which is, is that's, I could have switched in Pinsir there, but Pinsir wouldn't be able to do much against him. So we're just going to take him right out with an Ice Beam, which is great because Gliscor can be extremely annoying to face between protecting and getting so much HP back. Definitely happy to take Gliscor out this early. Gliscor and Venusaur is actually a pretty good combination with, um, me well, Gliscor is weak to Ice, but Gliscor takes physical hits a little bit better than Venusaur, and Venusaur is grounded, of course, so you're able to switch between the two to dodge Earthquakes. Um, Gliscor doesn't mind if he gets poison, and since he's poisoned, it's easy to switch him in to avoid uh, uh, Will-O-Wisp and such when people are trying to burn Mega Venusaur, because, of course, you can't poison Mega Venusaur, so you have a, a defensive core that can't be toxic, which is the way a lot of people deal with walls. So I really like that idea. Um, he brings back in Greninja, it's definitely because now he's thinking, okay, I got rid of his um, uh, Assault Vest, so he's ready to hit me with a more powerful Ice Beam now, he'll be taking 50% more damage. Um, I still think I can take it, I'm just going to go for, um, I could go for Flamethrower expecting the Ice Beam, or I could go just for Dragon Pulse, he doesn't know that I have Flamethrower, but that knowledge doesn't really matter because he he doesn't really have anything weak to Flamethrower, so it doesn't really benefit me to save that move. Uh, I think I'm just going to go straight for Dragon Pulse again. Just to keep him honest, he's going to go for Ice Beam. I could have gone for the Flamethrower, but I'm I'm pretty sure he's Sash, so uh, I don't think it's going to matter too much. Ow, that is a lot without the Assault Vest. And so now we're going to go for one more Dragon Pulse. This is the third one I've gone for in this battle. Okay, brought him down to a nice little range there. Now if he goes for Flamethrower again, hmm, I believe Greninja has 123 base speed, I think. I may be thinking of Noivern. Greninja actually has 122 base speed, I believe, because I think he's one base speed slower than Noivern. Uh, I don't really like looking up stuff during a battle, so I'm not going to. But I'm like 95% sure that's what it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume it's 122 base speed, which means he outspeeds everything that I have. So, let's see, if he's going to keep on going for Ice Beam, then that means a good switch in here will be... Hmm... I think Infernape could be a really good switch in, unless he predicts that and goes for a Water Time move, that would be terrible. Although, at this point, since I have gotten rid of Gliscor, it's not as useful to have Gudra, especially since I have Thunderbolt on my Starmie. So just to keep him honest, I'm going to stay in here and go for another Dragon Pulse, especially since I don't have my Assault Vest anymore. He is just going to go straight for another Ice Beam, that's fine. Thank you very much, Gudra, you did a great job in this match. You basically came out and kept his entire team honest there, I don't think that crit mattered. Uh, but now, this allows me to bring in my Infernape safely and go for a Mach Punch. Now, it's very likely that he's going to just switch out to um, his Dust Noir, which... Hmm, should I even bother going out into Infernape? Because if he brings out Dust Noir, Dust Noir will be able to take hits from anything on my team. Uh, let's see, let's see. I think... Yeah, because I don't think I'm going to be able to KO him from that range with an Aerial Lake Quick Attack from Pinsir. So, that means... Yep, bringing out Infernate and just Mach Punching is going to be my best move. Even if he brings out Dust Noir, I'm okay with that. For Dust Noir, I can just switch out to Shuckle, who can at least knock it off. Uh, or if it tries to go for any weird substitute, pain split, curse, shenanigans, I can Encore it as well. But yeah, we're just going to go straight for Mach Punch, just because. 
Alright, he is going to switch out into Dust Noir. That's fine, too. Uh, oh, he switched out to Swampert. That's okay. That means I at least get some damage off on Swampert. Alright. Bam. Choice Band and Mock Punch does about a quarter. That definitely is a max HP, max defense Swampert. Not what I really wanted to see, but, you know, we'll deal for now. He's probably going to set up Stealth Rocks or go for a Water-type move. Um, I don't want to switch Starmie into an Earthquake. Starmie could take a Water-type move, but since I only have Surf and uh, Thunderbolt, I can't really do much to it with Starmie. And... let's see... Hmm... Let's just switch into Fuckle right now. And uh, shout outs to Crystal for telling me how to spell that so I can get around the name sensors. <laughs> Throwing that period in there allows me to do it. So he is just going to go right for a waterfall, which sucks. I was hoping he set up Stealth Rocks. Because now I may not get up my own Stealth Rocks. No. But I will. Oh, that was a crit. Well, I did a lot of damage because I know he's defensive. So and I think I'm just going to put up my Sticky Web because now that I got rid of his Gly score, um, if I put up Sticky Web, then that means. His Greninja number one won't be able to outspeed me, and that ensures uh, that I won't have to go for a Mach Punch to get rid of it anymore. So, yeah, let's just go right for the Sticky Web, and uh, he is just going to go for another Waterfall. Since that last one was a crit, there's no way this is going to KO me. Oh, wow, that does so much damage. All right, cool. Definitely got up my Sticky Web. Uh, I'm, I did not mean to sacrifice you like that, Chuckle. I n normally play a little bit more conservatively than that. But it's nice now that I'll be able to uh, set up pretty easily from here on out. Too bad I didn't get a chance to power split. I'm really surprised he didn't set up Stealth Rocks. I was really expecting him to. Um, we're just going to go for knockoff because I don't really want to switch anything in here. He's just going to go for Waterfall again. That's fine by me. Alrighty. So one more Waterfall will be enough to take me down. Now he's definitely defensive. I do not expect to be able to take him out with Pinsir, um, but in the same token, I don't expect him to be able to take me out with anything either. Uh, he probably has Waterfall, Earthquake, Stone Edge, maybe Toxic. If he has Stone Edge, definitely don't want to deal with that. Um, but let's see here. I think my best switch here is going to be the amount of HP he has. Hmm. I could easily bring in Starmie here. And just, unless he has, I think Swampert's hidden ability is Water Absorb, isn't it? I think so. Um, so it may not be good to rely on that. Although a Life Orb Surf will definitely put the hurt on him. I'm like, no, I think his hidden ability is Damp. I would have remembered if his hidden ability was, was, uh, Water Absorb. So yeah, we're gonna go on to the Starmie. I'm pretty sure there's nothing you can do to KO me, because he's a much more defensive Star uh, Swampert based on how he took that Mach Punch, and by the fact that he didn't um, one-hit KO my Shuckle. So, we're just gonna go straight for a Surf Attack. He could easily bring in Blastoise here, who does not want to take a Thunderbolt. Uh, he could also bring in Dust Noir, but Dust Noir is not going to like taking an Analytic Boost Surf, because of course Analytic activates when your opponent switches as well. So, if he switches, he's going to take a more powerful attack. If he stays in, he runs the risk of losing his Swampert. So he is switching. This is awesome. I'm going to get an Analytic Boosted attack off here. He's going out into Venusaur, which I should have seen that coming, but you know, it is what it is. The Sticky Web's going to activate here, which is not going to matter because, of course, Starmie outspeeds Venusaur anyway. I'm just going to go straight for Surf. That being Analytic Boosted did way more than I thought it was going to, and now he is definitely in range for an Ice Beam KO which is exactly why I kept Ice Beam on Starmie. Even though he has Thick Fat, being boosted by the Life Orb should be able to get just enough damage to finish him off, and it is right here. So, great work there. And that is why I was trying out Analytic on Starmie, because Starmie is able to force a lot of switches. So getting a 30% boost to your special attack uh, really helps a lot. Um, it works really well, of course, on Behem, because Behem is a lot slower than Starmie. So, uh... Behem is naturally slower, he gets the boost. Starmie forces switches, so she's able to get the boost. So, and here, once again, I kept Thunderbolt on Starmie just for this reason. Since the sticky web is up, I will be able to outspeed or not. Is this a Scarf Greninja? Wow, that is definitely a Scarf Greninja if I've ever seen one. Alrighty then. Well, since he's Scarfed, uh. 
Let's see, he still has Dust Noir, he still has... This might be a really good opportunity to set up with Pinsir, actually. Hmm. Um, if you guys are ever considering using Mega Pinsir, uh, I, I, he can do a lot of different things, but his wall breaking capabilities are really big. But since my opponent is locked into Dark Pulse, hmm, if only I brought Mega Hair across this battle. Um, I could bring, actually I'm going to bring an Infernape and just go for a U-turn. Because he's not going to stay in since he's locked into Dark Pulse, I don't think. So, we're just going to go for that good old U-turn, which is banded. I'm going to be able to hit something pretty hard, because I don't think he's going to stay in. Uh, it's unfortunate that I just now learned that he's scarfed. Otherwise, I definitely would have, um... Oh, he's going for the flinch. Okay, good. Don't have to worry about Greninja anymore. That is very good, because now I can just go on into Mamoswine. And, or actually, who's he have left? He has Blastoise, Swampert, and Dust Noir left, I believe. So yeah, now is not a good time to go out into... You know, we are just going to go out into Mamoswine. Because I won't be able to one-hit KO anything that he has left, so getting extra damage on it will be really, really good. Mammal Swine, of course, this one is a max speed build. It's jolly, so I can lay up my rocks really, really quickly. And Mammal Swine has no slouch on the speed with base 80 speed. So uh, if he brings out Blastoise, he already Mega Evolved, um, so I can get a really good hit off on him with Earthquake. And uh, I have Lumberry on my Mammal Swine as well. I was considering Focus Sash, but uh, Lumberry... Mammal Swine is kind of prone to getting burned. I don't think Blastoise can kill me in one water attack unless he is an offensive Blastoise, but then I would expect him to have a uh, Mega Blastoise in that case. So he may just Rapid Spin, actually. Which, now that his Greninja is gone, I... Although, it was Scarfed anyway, so that didn't work out too well. Uh, but let's just get off a really good hit with Earthquake here. Oh, he has Fake Out. This Blastoise is certainly different here. It's getting a little... He probably did that in case I had a Sash. That crit hopefully will not come back and matter too much later on. Let's just get off some good damage on Blastoise here so that Pinsir can come back and finish him off. Wow, that did a lot of damage. He goes for the Water Pole, so this definitely is a Mega Blastoise type set. Um, and like I thought, he wasn't going to be able to KO me there. Just because Mammal Swine has really good general bulk. Um, and we're just going to finish him off with another Earthquake. Uh, he has Protect, so this is a this seems like a doubles Blastoise. I'm, I'm curious if we brought the wrong Blastoise. Because uh, Protect there, it's not going to help him. I don't see any items, so I'm assuming he had the ability to Mega Evolve into Blastoise or Mega Venusaur, depending on what he thought while the opponent's team better. Um, and so I'm going to be able to finish him off there with an Earthquake, which is perfect, because uh, unless his Dust Noir has Shadow Sneak, I should be able to get off a hit on it first. And even if he does have Shadow Sneak, I have Ice Shard, so I'll be able to put a little bit of damage on him um, first there. So... Let's just uh, go straight for Ice Shard, because I'm expecting him to have Shadow Sneak. And that's not something that we really want to deal with, to be completely honest. So, put a little bit of damage on there, not too bad. That did way up, he does have Shadow Sneak. So I'm happy I didn't try to go for Earthquake. Uh, thank you very much, Mammoth Swine, for taking down that Blastoise. That would have been a little bit annoying to try to take out. So now I'm going to bring back in my Bandit Infernape, just to ensure that I, with the Bandit Fire Punch that I can put... Dust and Wire at a level to where uh, Mega Pinsir can handle it. Um, and also, I don't want to bring in Mega Pinsir and have it have the possibility of getting burned. Because, of course, if you're a Mega, you can't really do anything about that. You can't hold a Lumberry. So, he's going to go for the Shadow Sneak. I don't mind that at all. It's not going to KO me, even if he's max attack. While I did not do very much at all, I sh I'm going to be able to 2 8 KO him probably with two Fire Punches, just because they're Choice Banded. And so now he's probably going to bring in Swamper, and I may not need to use Mega Pinsir at all. Um, cause, well, okay, I am going to need to use it, cause I'm not going to switch Mega Pinsir into Swampert, and he's just going to hit me with a water type move, and of course Swampert does not yet have a Swiss Swim hidden ability from being a Mega Swampert, so, uh, yeah, we're not going to have to worry about that too much, so I'm just going to hit him with another Banded Fire Punch here, just to make sure I put as much damage on him as possible before I go for an Aerialate Return from Pinsir. And he's going to go for Avalanche. I think he was expecting me to switch to Pinsir right there. But, hmm. It's odd that he went for Avalanche because Pinsir is not a flying type yet. I actually haven't had a chance to Mega Evolve it yet. So, this actually, this next Banded Fire Punch may KO him. 
Uh, if it does, I won't need to use Mega Pinsir, but if it doesn't... Oh, it does not. So, we're going to get off the very last hit of the batch with Mega Pinsir. And yeah, he definitely overpredicted on that last turn. Um, and, but I did enjoy the match, so thank you very much, Chewie or Mike Hobbs. Um, I actually have a... Uh, a uh, I have a couple of Pokemon that he helped me breed back in 5th Gen, where we were exchanging kind of breeding things. And I have a... Um, I have several Pokemon that he bred for me, and it's fun because they're on their original trainer name. It says Chewy, so I don't know. I just like that as far as um, the names go. But making sure that I don't forget to Mega Evolve like I did in that one battle with Aerodactyl. So we're going to Mega Evolve, and then we're just going to go straight for the Aerial A Boosted Return. So here's Mega Pinsir, back in that whopping attack stat. And here we go. Return should be all we need to seal up this battle. I win it barely at a 1-0. So thank you very much, um, my CODs, for the battle. I hope you guys enjoyed this narration here. That was a pretty fun little battle. And hopefully next time I get to use a different set of six from that team there. Um, I, I did notice that I had a lot of uh, ice moves on my team, so I may need to go back on there and, and switch some of those out. But then again, maybe I won't end up using that combination of six again. So who knows? But I hope you guys enjoyed this battle video. Make sure you hit that like button if you did enjoy it. And I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye now.